Good morning, I'm Contact 5 Investigator Dave Bowman. We we're talking today, of course, about the uh, structural problems that forced the closing of a bridge in Stewart in Martin County. A lot of concern there, concern about the bridge, concern about its future. And uh, with me to talk about this is a man named Gary Nash. We're in Boca Raton where he works out of. Gary is a former chief district engineer for, for District 4, which I assume... The roadway engineer. Roadway yeah. engineer, which includes both uh, Palm Beach County and did it also include Martin? Martin, St. Lucie, yeah, okay. all and the way so up through So much of the Treasure Coast. My first question, your gut reaction as to what happened today when you learned of the uh, bridge being an imminent collapse is the words that were used. Well, eminent collapse is a, is a strong thing. Th those bridges are designed to take a lot of abuse. And one little segment falling apart isn't going to be an eminent collapse, especially when it's been inspected and everything else. But there are cables that hold that bridge together. And so all those sections are precast, put together, and then they're held together with cables. So it's an, an eminent collapse is, is a, you know, somebody that didn't understand the engineering part of it. One of the issues on this was this bridge was last inspected in 2018. It's 24 years old. Is that ideal to go two years without an inspection of a bridge like this? Well, it's, it's all bridges have a design criteria and they're all set up and they're all set on a schedule for when they're supposed to be, you know, re-inspected and everything else. And it all depends on the weather conditions and the salt the salt intrusion on these bridges, but they're designed very specifically. So the engineers that design these are, you know, designed, they're, they're the specialists, they're the bridge engineers. They build these things, they know what they're supposed to take, and they try and build them for the future. Built in 97, so 25 years ago, they're guessing at what the, the design ca capacities are for today. Is it right? You know, back then it was great. Today, we have to take a look at it and you know what the problems are all the bridges are having problems it's just a matter of setting the priorities to which one's the worst and how it's going to affect you know people traveling over it and the safety what are the possible explanations for this kind of deterioration uh when two years ago and it was inspected it had some very high grades hmm. you know it it might not have been visible right then it might have been a, a something you didn't see uh Heat and cold, hot and cold, expansion, contraction, uh, salt corrosion. Something could have, you know, built up in there. There, there could be a, a cable that broke, you know, and, and they couldn't see the cable because it's down inside the concrete inside a tube. So there's a lot of different things that can go wrong, and you don't know until you actually get up there and, you know, take it apart and take a look at it and see what it is. And it's, it's usually not a, a massive fix. But to replace a bridge like that is not hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's millions of dollars. So we have to just keep fixing them as best we can until you get a budget that's going to require that, you know, massive reconstruction of those items. When all is said and done in your professional experience, is it likely we're going to need a rebuild of this bridge or a repair of this bridge? Well, again, after the engineers get done, they're going to take a look at it. And if it's something like a cable, that got too much salt water on it or salt air on it and it corroded and it broke, now they're gonna have to look at all those cables and make that determination. But those things can be replaced. And then the concrete itself can be patched up and everything can be just fine. But again, if it's more of a heavy duty structural problem, then there's a, a rebuild, but you know, more than likely it's gonna be just a repair. It might be a little extensive repair, but I'm not, I haven't been up there in years, so I don't know and, and again, the bridge, department for the DOT, they're the ones that are the specialists in that. And I came along as the roadway engineer just to make sure the maintenance and all the stuff was being taken care of. How much does the fact that it's near salt water, it's salt water, it's near the coast, there's a lot of bridges that felt it, but there are also bridges on the interstate that are a little more inland. How much does this proximity to the coast and sitting over salt water uh, likely have to do with rapid deterioration. It's it's just like anything. Salt water and steel and concrete don't mix well. And the hard part about that is designing with that factor in there to be able to protect it well enough against that stuff for the longevity and for the cost. It's, it's not cheap to build a bridge. And so you can only put so many millions of dollars into something 
and expect it to last so long and then have to plan to have it repaired and replaced. When this bridge was built in 1997, it was likely something akin to state-of-the-art design. What's that? When this bridge was built in 1997, it was likely state-of-the-art design. Oh, yes. it Yeah. And it's still up there among the best today. I mean, they still use that particular style and, and design. And again, it's all based on the criteria that the engineers have to go by to build it, to handle the capacities and the storm loads and all that stuff. Should they be using this kind of design now that we know a little bit more in 2020 than we did when it was built? It, it, it depends on what the problem was. I got you. And again, if the problem was salt corrosion, now you got to figure out why it was corroding and then not make that mistake again. When this was inspected two years ago, uh, is it possible the inspector missed something or is it possible everything was fine and there was rapid deterioration? Well, it, again, <laughs> again, it could have been hidden because those, those cables are buried in, in a concrete in a tube inside of that that holds the, the pieces together. So you can't take that apart and go looking at every little piece. And if you've got a joint or a seam where the salt got into it, that causes that cable to corrode and then it could have weakened or broken. And you can't see that. And there, there's no way to tell because you it's visually it's impossible. So some other type of inspection method maybe they've got now to check the cables, I don't know. Uh, but that's one of the possibilities. And then, you know, time, age, expansion, contraction. We have a lot of expansion and contraction here in Florida. We have really hot days and we have cold days. We don't have really cold days, but enough to get the bridge to move. One other question about this. We had had in an earlier conversation for inspections, drones are being used. We don't know if it was used on this particular well, bridge. A, a drone would be great to see on the outside because now the drone can look around the outside, but you have, you know, again, wind concerns and traffic and everything else, and you gotta be careful flying a drone around those places, and you can, you can lose a drone real easy in wind conditions and have it break. And then they have the remote vehicles that they can put down that, that bridge is a hollow core in it, that you can run down it, but it's still not a human eye standing there looking at things, and sometimes you're walking along, you got a hammer, you're tapping on the, the side of the concrete, you can hear that hollow spot, and you go, hmm. We got to look at that, and if it's all nice and solid, but you can't, you can't cover every square inch of a bridge that big in detail to be able to know when it's going to have a problem. That sounds pretty scary to some people. Uh, yeah, it. But you, again, here's the economics of it. We have to inspect these bridges more and more now. The older they get, and so the department has to get, start skipping picking up these schedules, but now you got to have the funding to do all that. Do you think this bridge needs, bridges like this, in lieu of what's happened today, need to be inspected more often? I think with the, that age? I think the DOT is, is looking at that problem right now, and there's a lot of engineers out there doing that same, asking that same question, and trying to figure out what their priorities are going to be for the future. One other part about this as well, this is in an area that has also grown pretty rapidly since 1997 and a lot more traffic, probably a lot more truck traffic. Potentially a factor in what happened? Potentially. Again, it, it's, it's designed for, you know, whatever the design life was and depending upon, you know, what they did that on based on, yeah, it, it could not be meeting those design standards right now. but. That's again, that's what they have to look at. That's why they do traffic counts a lot. That's why they check the truck traffic and they start to know when these larger impacts are gonna start impacting these things. One of the things that's striking about this is this was discovered and reported by the Coast Guard, not DOT inspectors. How concerned should we be about that? Well, it, anybody that sees a large chunk of concrete falling off a bridge as long as it doesn't hit your car, yeah, you need to stop and call the police. And if it hits your car, then you're going to stop and call the police and find out what's going on. But that's, that's just what happens, and luckily nobody was injured in this one. Coast Guard happened to be going by and saw it. Great, they did the right thing. I think somebody that doesn't understand engineering and called it an enemy collapse didn't realize that it's, it may or may not be that bad, but 
it's a good thing that the DOT's out there and the engineers are taking a look at it and then they'll come back with a report and we'll know for sure and what they're going to do with it. Is it possible this was not an imminent collapse? E again, when you see something bad like that, unless you're an engineer and you see that you know, two thirds or three quarters of it's missing, then you got to stop and say, whoops, a small chunk of concrete falling out. It's not good, but it's not that disaster. And, you know, the guys in the Coast Guard are nice. They're great guys. They drive under a lot of bridges, but they're not bridge engineers, so they don't quite understand all the nuances. But then again, I, you know, if, if I were to see that, I would have called up somebody at the DOT and said, hey, you got a serious problem out here. You need to go and look at it. And just the media got involved, and now everybody knows about it. Final question on this. Um, in your professional experience, how long is it likely to take to get a report as to what happened, how bad this is or isn't, and when is traffic going to be two-way again? Well, it, they're scrambling right now. And again, it depends on what they find determines where they're how they're going to set it up. If it's not a bad thing and they got to just do a little bit of work, then they have it back up in a week or two. Or it could be months. And then again, it could be tomorrow when the engineer goes up and goes, oh, this is nothing really bad. We can repair this concrete spot right here. We can chip it out. And you don't have to shut anything down even while they're doing the work. So it's all in, it's all in what the engineers find and what the inspectors find up there today. Thank you so much, Gary Nash, former Florida Department of Transportation uh, roadway engineer for the district that includes Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast. We'll have much more of this and the collapse, or the, uh, uh, the concern of an imminent collapse of the Roosevelt Bridge in Stewart and Martin County coming up on our upcoming newscast. For now, I'm Dave Bowman, WPTV News Channel 5.